Hello, welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see about carbohydrates. So, uh, this particular video is based on UGTRB syllabus. So, this is uh, actually spelt out in the syllabus and uh, carbohydrates comes under unit 10. And in this video, we are going to see classification of carbohydrates, monosaccharides, family of DNN and up to epimers. So, this is the first part that we are going to see in this particular video. So, now let us see what are the carbohydrates that we use in our day to day life. So, these are some of the examples which we see around us in our day to day life and all of us are familiar with them. But all these are not made of the same kind of carbohydrate. Generally, we denote all of them as carbohydrates, but each of them are a different kind of carbohydrate. Say for example, glucovita bowls and glucon D is actually glucose. And uh, the stable sugar that we use in our coffee and tea is actually sucrose. And all the fruits, honey has the carbohydrate fructose. And milk and milk products have the carbohydrate lactose. And uh, all the vegetables, especially root tubers, that is the vegetables that are, you know, grown under the ground, they are primarily containing starch that is plants store their food material in the form of starch and uh, I did not spell out our storage form that is human storage form of carbohydrate which is glycogen. So, these are all different types of carbohydrates that we come across in our day to day life and each of them is different. So, we are going to see about these carbohydrates, how do we name them, what are their important properties and how do we differentiate between them. So, that is what we are going to see in this uh, session. So, now let us start with the name. So, uh, actually the name itself is a confusing one because carbohydrate means hydrates of carbon. So, initially people named these compounds as carbohydrates because they had the formula, you know, general formula CnH2O n times. So, here I have put out an example of C6H12O6, which is a very popular example um, where we know this is actually glucose. So, in this particular molecule, if we take the empirical formula from the molecular formula, it appears as though carbon and water is being repeated. So, if we see the empirical formula for all the different types of carbohydrates, we will see that uh, it will be water multiplied n times and carbon in uh, in some other composition. So, ultimately, generally what we see is these are containing carbon and water units. So, that is why they gave the name as carbohydrates. But then actually they are not hydrates of carbon. They are different molecules. Chemically, they are different molecules. But then the name remains. And there are other names to these carbohydrates. So, most of these carbohydrates are sweet to taste. That is why they are called as saccharides. Uh, shakar, sugar, saccharides. So, because majorly they are sweet to taste, but we know not all carbohydrates are sweet to taste. Some of them are tasteless, uh, like say for example, starch. And then when we name them, we see majorly they have end with O's, but again I recollect starch does not end with O's, but then it is also a carbohydrate. So, uh, there are confusions to names of carbohydrates, but then there are scientific, you know, classifications to these carbohydrates also. So, now we will see what is the scientific uh, classification of these carbohydrates. So, technically carbohydrates can be classified based on their chemical composition as monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. So, as I told you, saccharides, this is the a popular name that is given or the common name that is given to these carbohydrates. IUPAC nomenclature also, you know, spells out or agrees with this notation of using saccharides. So, monosaccharides from the name mono itself, mono means one, di means two, oligo means smaller fragments, poly means more than 100 units. So, all of them are saccharides. So, a monosaccharide is a single entity, a disaccharide is 
two of monosaccharides combined together is a disaccharide. If there are more than two, then it becomes oligosaccharides. Polysaccharide is if it is more than 100 monosaccharide units. In other words, how can we say a polysaccharide when it is hydrolyzed, it breaks down into many units of monosaccharide. Okay. Similarly, the disaccharide when it is broken down or when it is hydrolyzed, it breaks into two monosaccharide units. So, I have spelled out some common examples of monosaccharides which we come across in our in studies of carbohydrates. So, in, under monosaccharides, we have glucose, fructose, galaxose. And disaccharides, very popular disaccharides are sucrose, lactose and maltose. So, in the introductory slide, wherein I showed sucrose, so the table sugar that we use in our day-to-day -day life is not glucose, it is actually sucrose. Glucose is glucovita, glucon D. And then lactose is the carbohydrate that is present in uh, dairy products. Again, it is a disaccharide. And then we have maltose. Maltose is also present in malt extract. Again, it is a disaccharide. Then we have a set of oligosaccharides. So, a three monosaccharide unit is called as raffinose, four monosaccharides, styrose, and then we have the uh, verbacose. Then uh, polysaccharides. These are the three major polysaccharides which we are all familiar with. Um, starch is, as I told you in the earlier slide, is a storage form of carbohydrate by plants. Cellulose is the structural materials of plants, that is the bark, wood and other fiber materials in plants is actually cellulose. Then glycogen is the storage form of glucose in our body and we all know glucose gives us energy. Glucovita, glucon D we take because we need energy. So, when the body needs energy, it is uh, actually processed using converting glucose. So, glucose, excess of glucose is stored in the body as glycogen. So, whenever when the body needs glucose, the glycogen is broken down to glucose units. So, we will study all of these as uh, different uh, entities. But for now, we will understand the basic nomenclature of carbohydrates and how these carbohydrates are um, uh, studied, how they are written and what are their uh, primary properties. So, now coming to the nomenclature. So, as I told you before itself, the carbohydrates have different name, but chemically they are polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones. So, the definition of a carbohydrate is Carbohydrates are polyhydroxyaldehydes or polyhydroxy ketones. And uh, another, because they are containing aldehyde or ketone group, sometimes they are called as aldose. If they contain aldehyde group in them, they are called as aldose. If they contain ketone group in them, then they are called as ketose. This is a general name using their functional group. Then, the carbohydrates are actually aliphatic compounds, that is they are straight chain compounds. So, because they are straight chain compounds, the chain can vary from 3 to um, more 6 numbers. So, 6 because uh, hexose, uh, that is glucose is C6H12. So, we will stick to the 6th number and that is the one which is necessary for our biological systems. In our uh, biochemistry, up to hexose is what we uh, will be learning. And uh, uh, this is what is naturally occurring and so we will stick to hexose alone. So, glucose is hexose, so it is containing 6 carbon. So, based on the number of carbon atoms, these carbohydrates are also called by these names that is triose, tetrose, hexose. So, glucose has many names. So, glucose is also called as hexose. So, now I have put out an example for each of these categories. So, uh, the first example is D-glyceraldehyde. What does that D mean? That we will see in the next slide. But for now, I, I am confining our understanding to understand these terminologies that are used for carbohydrates. So, here glyceraldehyde is actually the simplest polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone. So, in this particular molecule, if you see, there are two OH group and one aldehyde group. And then as we increase the carbon chain, the number of OH groups starts to increase. So, all of these are having aldehyde group and so they are called as aldoses. 
and because they are having so in case of glyceraldehyde you see one two three carbon atoms so it is a triose erythrose d erythrose has four carbon atoms so it is called as tetrose and then ribose d ribose has five carbon atoms and so it is called as pentose and then this is an example of a carbohydrate which is having a keto group i told you car polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones so this is an example where we see a keto group is present and this is nothing but our fructose so fructose and glucose are isomers both of them have the same molecular formula but they have different functional groups so that's why they are functional isomers so a keto uh, fructose is a ketose glucose is a aldose but both of them are hexose but popularly glucose is the one which is called as a hexose so fructose is a ketose hexose whereas glucose is a aldose hexose so these are the ways in which these carbohydrates can be denoted so all of these are accepted nomenclatures for carbohydrates so a carbohydrate can be named or can be called by these names also so that is an important thing to remember and uh, uh, we must know this uh, from glyceraldehyde to d glucose we see the carbon chain has increased from 3 to 6 and and uh, all of these carbohydrates are straight chain compounds there is no uh, no aromaticity in these molecules so that is why all carbohydrates are aliphatic compounds so they are straight chain compounds and they are aliphatic compounds and uh, uh, one important thing is this d ribose we must know this d ribose is the sugar that is present in dna so this is also an important carbohydrate that we must remember so the sugar unit that is present in dna or rna is this sugar unit which is ribose sugar so it is deoxy ribose or ribose that is present in dna it is deoxy ribose in rna it is ribose so this is an important sugar uh, that we know is a part of the genetic makeup and then coming to glyceraldehyde glyceraldehyde was the inspiration or or the basis or the first unit based on which all other carbohydrates were named so that is what we are going to see in the next slide so we are going to see some other notations which is the configuration so when we saw these structures of carbohydrates we saw all of them are written in a um, fisher notation so all of us are familiar with fisher's notation wherein we use cross bars that is uh, cross or vertical and horizontal lines to depict carbon bonds and then to understand their stere stereochemistry we use it for can ingol prelock rule so here in case of carbohydrates when we talk about their stereochemistry Uh, we know that uh, they are having a chiral carbon say for example here in glyceraldehyde so the carbon that is here is actually a chiral carbon because it has four different groups attached to it so this is hydrogen here um, ch2oh group here here oh here is an aldehyde so glyceraldehyde is actually having one car chiral carbon and in stereochemistry we know if there is one chiral carbon then there are two stereoisomers possible that is the molecule and its mirror image so glyceraldehyde mirror image is written here in can in you think can ingol prelock rule we can assign rs notation for this but in carbohydrate chemistry dl notation is popularly used and please do not confuse with small d small l small d small l was an older notation for optical activity which and which is now replaced by plus n minus okay so configuration is actually the way i draw the structure on the paper and if you are interested in understanding configuration you can see our other videos on this topic exclusively discussing what is configuration and how to assign configuration here we will confine our understanding to uh, understand what is capital d and capital l so in carbohydrate chemistry d and l are popularly used to assign configuration that is how i draw the carbohydrate on paper 
is uh, understood by understanding D and L notation. And uh, as I told you, all carbohydrates have stereocenters. So, all of them have stereoisomers. In the sense, they are all having mirror image isomers. So, we know the term enantiomers. So, again, please uh, read up uh, other videos that, ha that I have put on enantiomers to understand the definition of an enantiomer, diastereomers, etc. So, mirror image isomers are called as enantiomers. So, Emil Fischer was the father of carbohydrate chemistry. So, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1902. So, all the story of carbohydrate that we are learning is actually, um, uh, you know, defined and discussed and uh, uh, given by Emil Fischer. So, his contribution to carbohydrate, uh, protein and enzyme chemistry is tremendous and 90% uh, of whatever we are learning under these topics uh, were actually uh, research done by Emil Fischer. So, now coming to assigning configuration, Emil Fischer was the one who assigned configurations of carbohydrates. He was the one who said that we will use D and L notation to understand the configuration of carbohydrate. And he used glyceraldehyde as an example because all the carbohydrates when they were, you know, when chain uh, length was decreased or they were confined to degradation process, they ended up with D glyceraldehyde and not with L glyceraldehyde. So, he concluded that all the carbohydrates have a D configuration, naturally occurring carbohydrates. So, any naturally occurring carbohydrate was understood to have a D configuration and L is a, can be made synthetically in the chemistry lab, but naturally what is available in plant and animal sources is the D, D carbohydrates, uh, which were obtained from D glyceraldehyde. So, he came up with a definition of how to find out D and L. So, he said whatever be the length of the carbohydrate chain, we know that they are either aldehydes or ketones and aldehyde in Fisher's notation, the reactive group is written on top and then we go down the group, okay. So, we put the chain down. So, you see aldehyde is written on top and then the chain is written like this. So, he said when, when you would want to assign D or L, you look at the bottom most carbon atom that is from the bottom the first chiral carbon atom. So, the, the CH2 group CH2OH group is not the first chiral carbon. So, the second one only is the chiral carbon. So, look at the first chiral carbon and if the OH is on the right then you give the notation D. If the OH is on the left then you give the notation L. So, this is the definition of D and L in carbohydrate chemistry. So, you do not have to look at any other part in the structure. What we have to see in the structure is from bottom, the first carbon, is it written on, is the OH written on the right or is it on the left? If the OH is written on the right, it is D sugar. If it is written on the left, it is L sugar. So, this is all about writing the structure on paper. This has nothing to do with its optical rotation. So, optical rotation is something else and we will see it later. So, again, I have written the structure of glucose. So, again, here we see D glucose has OH on the right and its mirror image has OH on the left. So, the D glucose is having its first OH from bottom, the chiral carbon on the right and L glucose when you see from the bottom, the first OH is on the left. So, that is why the notation capital D and capital L is assigned for this molecule. So, now if you are look, uh, thinking about optical activity, that is small d small l which is now converted to plus and minus. How this molecule will behave in a polarimeter? whether it will rotate the plane polarized light to the right or left is optical activity and that is using plus or minus. So, now we have to remember that the capital D and capital L notation is only to write the structure on paper and if we see a carbohydrate structure and from the bottom if we see the first OH group on the right then the glucose has the notation D. If it is on the left then it has the notation L. So, now let us see the other examples. So, erythrose again, erythrose again, erythrose 
and prios these are very popular names in carbohydrate because again the, this is from glyceraldehyde the first carbohydrate and these two carbohydrates again sorry this carbohydrate has two OH group so the two OH group on the same side or two OH group on the opposite side accordingly we will call it as erythrose and prios so from bottom again the first OH group is on the right side so it is D on for the next one it is on the left side so it is L again right D left L and because these two are mirror image isomers uh, they are called as enantiomers they are non superimposable mirror image isomers in the sense they are all existing they are different molecules and so they are called as enantiomers so now coming to uh, glucose glucose has four stereo uh, sorry four chiral carbons so if you see here uh, one two three four so glucose has four chiral carbons so it has two power four stereo isomers which is two into two into two into two which is 16 so glucose has 16 stereo isomers in the sense all the d sugars are presented here so their mirror image isomers should also be included so if you see we have put eight here so other eight is the l sugar so glucose has 16 stereoisomers and uh, all of them uh, so you have eight different isom sugars and their mirror images so um, it is better for us to know these names and how they are uh, written so that it will be easy for us to recognize them when the structure is given to them given to us in an examination because uh, and it is very simple to write also so you start with talos you and all of the d sugars you are going to put the oh on the right from the bottom and then how the OH, the other three oh are represented is what we have to remember for all these carbohydrates so next we are, what we will see is uh, the optical activity as i told you optical activity is different from configuration configuration is how i write the structure on the paper so d erythrose should be written like this only two oh group on the same side and D because the OH from bottom should be written on the right that is all but then optical activity is what will happen to the plane polarized light when I put this D glucose in a polarimeter so we see the specific rotation of the erythrose is given it is minus 32 so you should not think D na plus D is also can also be minus so a sugar which is written as D is not necessarily a plus sugar it can be a minus sugar on the other hand a sugar which is l can also be a plus rotating substance also so that is also a possibility so you cannot conclude that d and l are same as plus and minus a d sugar can also show negative optical rotation or it can be levo rotatory we will study about carbo uh, sorry glucose opti uh, optical activity and its rotation in another video where we will be studying about muta rotation so now let us see another important uh, definition which is epimers so uh, when i showed you the various stereoisomers of carbohydrate there were eight different stereoisomers and what is the connection between all these stereoisomers they are all diastereomers because they are all six carbon carbohydrates and uh, they have a different configuration in their carbon atoms in their stereocenters so they are all diastereomers enantiomer is mirror image isomers so when you have a set of diastereomers in carbohydrate chemistry they connected the diastereomers so when you see d mannose and d glucose uh, only ca configuration about carbon 2 was different all other configurations are same so they said uh, this two can be called as epimers that is carbohydrates that differ in configuration about one carbon atom are called as epimers so in order to connect between carbohydrates uh, different uh, terms were used and epimers is one definition so epimers are actually diastereomers technically by stereochemistry but uh, in carbohydrate chemistry we call them as epimers 
and then we see here the d notation because the oh is written on this side right hand side we see they are all denoted by d notation so all of them are d sugars and uh, likewise in case of galactose the 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 connection between glucose and galactose is it is a uh, c4 uh, epimer because only at c4 the oh is having a different configuration whereas in others we, uh, the configuration is the same. So, uh, this is a very popular question in all competitive examinations wherein uh, the questions could be which of the following pairs are epimers or which of the following pairs are C2 or C4 epimers or which sometimes um, uh, glucose, uh, D-glucose, uh, uh, which, uh, which pair the uh, epimer of D-glucose. So, these are some of the ways in which questions could be asked and structures could also be asked. So, it is better for you to draw the structures and write them and learn them and see. Uh, that way, it is very easy for us to remember this concept and any question based on this particular uh, concept can be very easily explained. 